Senator Dasko. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Lieutenant Governor Elizabeth Dowdswell, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau, and Toronto Mayor John Tory were there. His colleagues from the Toronto Star and the journalism community were there, and his family and friends were there. Last Wednesday, 400 of his closest friends gathered together in downtown Toronto, of course, to honour and celebrate our friend John Honderick, who passed away suddenly on February the 5th of this year. It was a party that John would have loved. Mayor Tory bestowed posthumously the keys to the city. Former Toronto Star managing editor Mary Deanne Shears talked about John's days leading crusades both inside and outside the newsroom. Former City Councillor Gord Cressy recalled growing up with John at Bedford Park Public School and how this child of privilege began at a young age to give back to his community. And son Robin Hondrick told stories of growing up with Sister Emily, John's devotion to his grandkids Sebastian and George, and his love of grand gestures and storytelling. John Hondrick was the longtime editor and publisher of the Toronto Star, which is Canada's largest daily newspaper with the largest readership in this country. He was devoted to excellent journalism and was willing to pay for it. He was a relentless advocate for social justice. He was a Toronto booster and a national city builder, and he left this country in a much better place, a much better place. John began his career in 1973 as night copy boy at the Ottawa Citizen, delivering late night food orders to reporters and editors. He joined the Star in 1976, going from an economics reporter to Ottawa bureau chief, Washington bureau chief and upward to editor in chief in 1988 and publisher in 1994. He left that job after a decade, but returned as board chair until 2020, when Tor Star was sold to new owners. Under his leadership, the paper won countless awards, way too many to mention here, and several of these awards recognize the impact of journalism in creating positive change. I particularly remember an extensive series in the Star where they got access to Toronto police data and found that black drivers were much more likely than whites to be ticketed by police taken into police stations and held overnight. Many Torontonians were shocked at these findings of racial profiling, but others were shocked that the Star actually did this kind of journalism. This was in 2002, 18 years before the Black Lives Matter protests of 2020. Well, I could go on. John personally received countless awards including the Order of Canada. But what I will miss is his big smile, how much fun it was to hang out with him, talking and chatting about all matters, large and small. There should have been much more time. John, you left us too soon. Rest in peace. Thank you.